Uh, my name's Alex, uh, this is my 18 plate Ford Transit Mark 8, which I've uh, self built over the last sort of two years to be sort of a four season adventure van. Taking it all the way down to the bottom of Romania for Halloween and Dracula's Castle, and all the way up to the Arctic in winter for some extreme cold conditions. And everywhere else in between, really. Uh, I built the van over the course of about a year. Vans always builds always take a bit longer than you expect. And from a completely empty panel van to sort of a van for me, just by myself, to basically be able to go to any environment I want. Um, with lots of sort of high-tech features as I quite like doing a lot of nerdy stuff and experimenting with things which maybe haven't been done potentially before in vans and just playing with ideas. I built this van to be a four-season adventure van. I like to sort of marry my professional life of working in extreme environments all over the globe with my own personal rather extreme travel and trips. So taking the van up to the Arctic was just a natural thing for me to do. Currently here. I think if I drive over here, I can hide. I can hide over here. It's a bit closer than uh, the tunnel, and that's that's going into the wind. for a lot in the storm. Ready to fing move. Welcome to my van. I think the uh, the first thing we'll show would be I built this van as, as a four season vehicle, so access and walk through to the cab. Easy way to walk into the driving seat and the passenger seat, but also massively insulated. And then coming back, the main thing when you come in the door is you've got my big shower room. So the shower room acts as one as a wet room toilet, uh, but also it's a drying room, so I can hang a kit up in here because I can have the diesel heater vending heat and it gets about 60 odd degrees. It gets really hot. It's also be a sauna, I guess, if I want as well. But on the back of the shower, uh, the obvious thing people see is, is all the filters. So I run a recirculating shower system, which means I can have a 40 minute shower if I want on only 10 liters of water. All the water gets screened through a bunch of filtration filters and then through it into a UV steriliser. So I can have unlimited hot water in a, in a van, which for me is great, long hot showers and living in a vehicle, water is always a finite resource. So saving water so it was a really good option. Coming back into sort of the kitchen galley area, I've got a huge, almost three meter work surface, which for me is great. I do a lot of tinkering with electrics and projects and a lot of filming. Uh, and this is great sort of work area. Induction hob over here. My van is gas free and it's completely electric. So I use a sterling power induction hob or for my equivalent of an oven, I end up using a, a air fryer. And that works for me. Um, and what a lot of people kind of wonder, particularly for my van, is where is the bed? So behind these panels is a, a Super King. You drop down one of the panels across onto the work surface. I pull out the bed, I pull out the mattress, pull out the duvet, and then I've got just under a Super King. For me at six foot one, I can starfish and it's no problems at all. So when the bed's down, nice big bed. I've also got my TV, which sits behind here, which means I can play on my Xbox if I want, watch Apple TV, catch up on my streaming services which are all sort of used off the Wi-Fi in the van. So electrics for the van, or as I mentioned, the van is electric only, there's no gas. All my cooking is done by induction hobs or done by the air, the air fryer. So for me on the roof, I've got 500 watts of solar panels, uh, which is great for my summertime use. And over the course of the year, about 75% of all power generated in the vehicle 
is by solar, but for winter use, especially when I'm going up to the Arctic and doing some pretty extreme things, I've got battery to battery chargers by Victron. Um, however, I like playing around and experimenting with things. So the systems I've got on my battery to battery chargers um, actually make them output far higher than 30 amp. So after about an hour, most people would see the performance on these overheating and get to around 25 amp output. My cooling system I've added to them, I get about 32.5 amp. So I get about a 25% increase in performance. On top of that, the rest of the, the equipment is Victor as well. I find it's really great to work for, like work with. And that's also powering everything in the van, such as the Xbox, the Apple TV, the induction cooker, uh, the air fryer, which lives in the cupboard, because that's portable. And all the things from like the, the smart lighting I've got. So I used Philips Hue lighting from my house, where you can have any really fancy colors if you wish. You can have it in the really dim bedtime modes, or you can have some warm lights for the evening, all with wireless controllers, which can be programmed from my app or programmed um, for, or and used remotely as well. So anywhere in the world, I can turn the van's lights on any colors I wish. And then even on the floor as well, I've got kick lighting. So after dark, if I get out of bed, there's a sensor on the floor that if anyone opens one of the doors or I step out of bed, all the floor lighting comes on in a dim color, just to help illuminate without kind of announcing to the world that I'm up. In my cupboards, whilst the, the rear cupboard is the electrical cupboard, all of the other ones are storage. So I don't have a garage, but I've still got absolutely miles of storage, which at the minute is mostly empty. You can keep my tools in, I can keep my outdoor clothes, my outdoor equipment in some of them, my cutlery and like cooking utensils and others. Um, the one just over at the front of the van is where I keep my hot water system. In my van, I have hot water from the diesel heater. So when my air diesel heater is running, uh, that will go for a heat exchanger made by a company called Bobble Vans in the UK. And that converts hot air into hot water. And that's what I use to power my recirculating shower. Additionally, because I like setting up and experimenting with different concepts for electric, uh, during the summer, about for about six months, all of my hot water is made via solar. Uh, as I have a, an electric element turn on, so when my batteries reach 100%, opposed to missing out on hours of sunlight per day, a, a hot water DC element turns on and that heats the water effectively for free. So at the end of the day, I have got a 60 degree tank of hot water and still 100% battery power because it's using otherwise excess or unused solar. Same when driving, if I'm on a long drive, um, that will turn on when the batteries reach 100%. So again, I'm using energy which would otherwise be unused because the batteries are full. Um, fridge wise in the van, I've got everyone's favorite van bill fridge, the domestic CRX50. And like many, I use it as my sticker board where I've got most of my content creator friends stickers on and I'm in their vans as well. Um, and works perfectly for, for what I need it to work for. Uh, it runs non-stop all the time. And it's got a small freezer in the top and during summer and winter, there's plenty enough fan to power it. It doesn't really affect it at all. So anything I would potentially do differently? Ooh, I think I'd love a big skylight if I'm honest. Everyone loves a big skylight. I've fitted a few for other vans and I'm kind of a bit jealous of some of those. But uh, at the moment, I'm pretty happy with, with how the van layout is. I think everyone's needs change along the way. So sometimes, you know, it's the beauty of having a self-build. You can change things if you need to and just add a new bit or redecorate if you want. So the seating options for my van, I've got the, the Lagoon mount that a lot of people go for, where I can have it outside for an fresco coffee morning or if I'm working or having dinner, I can have it based in the van for working on my laptop or eating food. The seats itself um, are the original bench seats from the front of the van and I've moved them back and I've looked into the specs of what's required to mount them safely to the vehicle. So I've got them remounted and bolted through the floor of all the correct sort of bolts and the plates needed to do so and have passed their MOT a number of times doing that. And in the front, I built a custom mount for a Ford Transit seat from the minibus, which one of my subscribers gave me. And I've got that bolted to the original bolt holes for the van as well. So in the front of the van, I wanted uh, a walkthrough. That was really important for me that I could just be able to jump into the driver's seat. Uh, particularly what it does, it means the all the cold glass from the windows uh, in the cab, especially for when I'm in, in a winter environment, doesn't affect the back of the van. It can be the Arctic, for example, it's 21 degrees with the diesel heater on the back of the van. And in the cab, it was minus 20 and there was frost forming and all the metal work in the cab. Um, there's a passenger seat as well, so I can still have three seat belted people uh, in the van, driver, passenger and one passenger in the back. The, uh, the other seat doesn't yet have uh, a seat belt and it also retains all the nice storage you get from a uh, transit normally. 
uh, because my uh, my job involved me as working as an expedition leader where I take people all over the globe to remote places. I collect little bits of art and it means I could decorate the van how I want. So I've got an Oryx head I picked up on a market in Namibia and that acts as a little notification of if any of the van doors are currently open. And on the back, I've got a, a Berber rug I haggled for one of my many trips working in Morocco in the souks. And just adding the, the personal touches is why there's a, a big map in the van on the back wall and just sort of my orange and blue colour theme, just sort of my sort of travels and what I wanted to do for the colours. So uh, the recirculating shower in my van is one of the, the major features you sort of see and something I spent a lot of time thinking about how I was going to do. In a, in a vehicle, water is always a finite resource and showers are a luxury and I wanted to make showers not a luxury. So this sort of system allows me to have a shower if I wanted indefinitely. You know, you could have a 40 minute, an hour long shower. Realistically, it means you can have a 10 minute shower, that 15 minute shower you might normally have, but not have to worry about the water running out. So the way the system works, turn on the shower, water goes into the drains. The drains then suck up the water via a pump, which pushes it back into the first set of, fil of filtration options. That then goes into the first set of filtration system, uh, which you've got a, a spin down filter, which sort of filters out larger debris, and then smaller, and then smaller again, and then a carbon filter. So with these filters, this is sort of cleaning the water and then cleans the majority of sediment and dirt out and most of the soap. And those, you kind of have to change every two to three months, depending on use and depending on the soaps you use. I've been, use, I've been experimenting quite a lot with different soaps. Uh, so using your shower gels, they generally get screened out less well uh, so you might have a little bit of like the color left or the water goes a little bit cloudy or soapy uh, quickly however if I'm been using natural bar soaps the filters clean those out really well but then it clogs the filters up maybe after six weeks opposed to two months or two and a half months after it's gone through the first filtration system which is removing sediment it then goes into a UV sterilizer which is hidden in this little cabinet here uh, and that is then doing any sterilization to the water. After it's gone through there, it drops back into the hot tank, which is the, the shower tank as such. So I just use this tank for showering. After it's back in there, the other pump is then sucking it out and pushing it back through the shower head and the system re re repeats itself. So I'm only having, I'm having a shower for an indefinite amount of time, but only using about 12 to 15 liters of water. And then I will change the water in the tank. I've got a little valve in the bottom of the tank which I can just turn and that empties the tank into the gray tank under the vehicle. And then I refill it. Uh, I usually get about four to five showers out of one sort of 15 liter amount of water. The water's not dirty as such. What it is, is it just gets a little bit of soap build up, which means it starts to look a little bit white and cloudy, but it means I could have a very, very long shower. Usually showers at a house can use up to 10 liters per minute. And in a van, that's a lot of water. I could have a nice 10, uh, 10 minute shower, which would use 100 litres of water, which would deplete most people's water tanks. But actually, I've only used 10 litres of water or so on. Personal security to me is pretty important in my van. Um, so I've got two Neos smart cams. Uh, they're really quite cost effective, about £20, but they don't have a subscription model, which is uh, quite a nice feature. And I can have those cameras in the cab and then one in the habitation area, which means I can get a notification on my phone and a bit of video sent if after I've armed them for the day, if something moves inside the van, I get a notification of what's going on. Or I can also just log in remotely or anywhere in the globe and just see what's going on in the van. Hopefully nothing, um, but it's nice to have that peace of mind to be able to see what's going on in the vehicle. In my van, I've got a 4G router, uh, and that goes to a, uh, a router, a Wi-Fi router, which then gives a whole van a Wi-Fi system. And that's why I have those cameras connected to. When I'm in the van, that's what my iPad and my iPhone and the Xbox and the Apple TV all connect to via wireless. And that's just using at the minute a EE SIM card with unlimited data. And that's still working in Europe for unlimited data for the time being. So in the cab, I've got a aux beam control panel and I use this for a variety of different features for the vehicle. Inside, I can turn the max fan up and down so I can close it. I often forget to put the max fan down when I'm driving. So I can press that button and the max fan will drop down. I can also activate the engine preheater. Um, especially working in the Nordic countries where it is minus 20 and below, engines, especially for British vehicles, don't like to start in those conditions. So I installed an engine preheater, which will heat the coolant in the engine before I start driving, a bit like a diesel heater for the air in the van, only it's diesel uh, liquid heater for the engine. So I can start that from here, turn it off and on, and then all of the auxiliary lighting I've got in the van from the under lighting, reverse lighting, the big light bars in the front and all the surrounding lights for the vehicle as well. 
which is great for park ups. It'd be able to illuminate to hang out outside the vehicle and have some lighting, but also um, especially in the Nordic countries where there are reindeer and moose on the road, having huge LED light bars is what every vehicle has out there. So be able to power that and control that from within the cab makes life for you, like, quite easy. So my job is I work as an expedition leader. So I'm not a digital nomad. I don't generally make money on the road like many of my other van life friends. Uh, what I usually do is I work taking clients all over the globe to remote places, which could be anywhere from around Southern Africa, Central Asia, Costa Rica, um, South America, all over. Or I do behind the scenes reconnaissance work as well. So I would do the safety stuff for expeditions of other guides to take their clients out doing remote treks, figuring out the safety options figuring out transportation options in those countries. And on top of that, I also photograph expeditions. So I will document those expeditions for the clients or for marketing material as well, which is what sort of led me to build a van with some quirky colors uh, and some strange things mounted on the walls, which are bits and bobs I've picked up for my travel, which is also why I built this van to be a four season adventure van. I like to sort of marry my professional life of working in extreme environments all over the globe with my own personal rather extreme travel and trips. So taking the van up to the Arctic was just kind of a natural thing for me to do because my skill set and guiding and working extreme environments would make that for me normal. Um, so I wanted to build the van to be able to support you know, what I like doing in my personal time and my professional time. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my van tour and um, I do have a YouTube channel about it. It's called Mispronounced Adventures, which sort of, sort of leads into my background, um, which is all about a mix between sort of how I built the van and all the sort of like techie aspects I put into it and also some of my rather extreme travels throughout the years in the van as well. So uh, yeah, if you see me around anywhere, just uh, come say hi. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project, but I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.